Once upon a time, the fairy folk lived in a place not far away, and although they hid themselves from human eyes, they could be seen by those who looked closely, dancing around snowdrops, singing a duet with the birds, or what joy when their voices were echoed by the woods. But a long time ago, the fairy folk moved on to a place far and wide. They were sad that humans turned away from nature. And so they decided to leave treasures in the most magical places to find. It is said that a lucky person will be sent a map. And that is when the magical adventure unfolds. The journey starts at a portal embedded in the ground, next to a moss field where magic is found. Follow the path and you will see a stage made for fairies beneath the ancient tree. Follow the path, let your heart be the guide in this fairyland spectacle where wishes reside. Bark adorned in patterns, ancient and wise, a dragon's essence in a boreal guise. Just a little further, a secret lake lies, the mirrors of nature where the moonlight flies. The sky is reflected in a shimmering glow, the mermaids are sleeping in the water below. Moss-covered roots weave a carpet below, in the dragon's shadow a tranquil tableau. Continue the journey, let wonder prevail, through realms where imagination sets sail. Tiny treasures, a sparkling thing, leave presents for fairies and you will hear their gentle voices carried in the wind. They sing. Keep your heart open, let perception be keen, for in the smallest wonders enchantment is seen. Look above you and see the trees that reach for the sky, just like the bees. Take a moment to enjoy that sight, to continue the journey, embrace the light. A staircase that leads to a realm where time finds its trace. As you climb, feel the whispers of the past. Each tree a silent witness, standing steadfast in all its grace. A small stream is your next guide. Follow its curse as the journey entwines to the ever-flowing waterfall where the sprites hide.
A big X on a tree stem marks the sign that you are nearly at your first destination where adventures align. Keep walking and look to your right. There is a stone wall where the giants reside. Across the stone wall another river flows with a furry green guardian protecting the dragon scales and secrets they bestow. The stone wall holds a secret can you find it? A secret map so old no one can tell how long it has been there to lead you to the whale. If you see the two eternal lovers, look to your right. Behind the little castle is where you shall find the portal. Step through the gateway, brave and free, into a world of endless possibility. Behind the whale awaits the guardian of this forest, standing tall. Next, a field full of thorns, a perilous task. To pass through the thorns, you must be unmasked. Ancient stones, witnesses of time, tell them a secret and say out loud, stones of wisdom, hear my plea, guard the secret shared with thee. They will send you a tiny guide that will show you the way to the ancient forest our treasure awaits. Take a moment at the dragon's tree to enjoy this place as nature meets here in all its grace. Now go north, follow the tree, covered in mushrooms, make your mind free. As for this last mission, you need to be able to see and hear me.
Through the enchanted forest where shadows play, follow the red ivy, it leads you the way. Hold hands with Mother Nature, seek the clues both far and near. Speak the ancient magic now, loud and clear. To unlock the secret that is in front of you, your intentions must be just and fair, for the secret store it will open and show you its air. Congratulations indeed on your victorious quest. May your future travels be ever blessed. In the tapestry of tales, your thread is spun. Your traveler's journey has only begun. I think this DIY idea is my favorite one of all times. It is really, really simple. And this box has been sitting in my altar for a very long time. And I thought that now is the perfect time to turn it into a very fairy treasure box. And it is really, really simple. All you need to do is paint your treasure box in a brown color or whatever you like. And I did not really care if the color looked perfect or not because I wanted it to look like really ancient and like it has been out in nature for centuries or even thousands of years. So you don't have to take care too much of how it looks like and we will also cover it later on with bark and moss and all of that good stuff. So yeah, first step, just color your box in a brown color or a greenish color. And as you will see, I will later on also set some highlights with a green color that I really love with a mossy green color and also a black color to set some highlights and to give it more dimension. And I feel like it looks not that good on camera, but when you look at it in like real life, it looks really, really good. I feel like the colors pop out way too much here. But as you can see here, I now paint the inside black um, because I really wanted it to look magical and mystical. And recently I found that beautiful piece of bark and actually I wanted to cover the box in roots but this piece of bark inspired me so much that I decided to make a box that looked like it was growing in a tree and I feel like that's what fairies would do right to cover it up so it's not found easily but it looks beautiful from the inside. And I was not really sure about the process because this was my first time. So first I started to glue some pieces of sticks and bark on top that I found recently. But I felt like it was too sharp on the edges, like it did not really look good. And that's basically when I decided to cover it in clay. And that's what I'm doing here. I use some PVC glue and basically just put some clay on top of it and make it look smooth and like it has been grown into the tree. So I have been working on that for three days and I forgot to film but I'm going to show you how I did that wooden look of the box and again I'm putting some PVC glue on the box 
before I put the clay on top so it's like safe and secure on there. And then I just mold the clay into the form that I want it to. And this is actually my first time imitating wood. So again, I was not sure how it would turn out. I was also a little bit afraid that it would not look good because at that point I was like, okay, that's not going to work or it's not looking good. And I feel like you don't have to try to be too perfect it's okay if it's looking a little bit rusty and crusty because that's the look we are going for it has been in there for like again thousands of years right so it can look old and here i'm just smoothening out the clay with pvc glue and water And after that, I'm using a tool to carve the wooden structure inside. But yeah, I'm using like small carvings and longer carvings to really give it a realistic shape. And I feel like I did not horrible. I feel like it turned out really well, especially with color on top of it. And this is a little tip after you are done with the carving to smoothen out the edges a little bit more. Use PVC glue and water again to really make it smooth and yeah, make it look like natural. And as you can see, I also put some crystals inside. I feel like that is something that fairies would do because they love shiny things. They love crystals. And yeah, again, I was really inspired by this piece of bark that had a little stone inside and grew around it. So yeah, that's basically my inspiration for that. And now I'm just painting on top of the red clay. And as you can see, it's turning out already much much better it looks way more realistic and I was so relieved that it actually looked like wood because again it was my first time but yeah I was mixing different brown colors and I also used some black to really give it some dimension and make it look like it has been rained a lot on top and there was a lot of dirt and dust that was like covering it up and now is the fun part. I really love using my hot glue gun and that's what I'm doing here. I am using some moss and some more bugs and little cones and leaves that I found throughout the year because I really want it to look like that it has been sitting inside of the tree and like leaves have fallen on top of it. So that was kind of the vibe I was going for and yeah. It's really easy, you can just do however you like it and with whatever you find at home. And look at it, isn't that so cute? I think it turned out so beautiful and I'm so happy that the color also turned out good. And something I found recently is that piece of wood and I did not know what I should use it for and I thought that is the perfect DIY idea. I'm also using a gold hot glue because I feel like that's giving more enchanted vibes. Um, so yeah, as you can see, this will be the piece to open our little treasure box. And I'm putting these little crystals or gemstones on top that I found. So I feel like that is something that fairies would do, like give you little shiny hints and tips to find the treasure box. And actually when I look at it in the dark and there is like a candle glowing, these little crystals are reflecting the light which is so magical and I just love it so much and I feel like that piece of wood finally has its perfect place so yeah really really happy with how that box turned out in general and I was basically just covering that whole box up with things I loved which are moss, pieces of bark, gemstones 
and pine cones and leaves. I also found this moss in a dollar store so I decided to use that to cover the inside because again I feel like even though fairies would really try their best to hide this box from human eyes they would make it really really beautiful on the inside so I feel like that was the perfect final touch for that and I glued that with some PVC glue inside. I again used some moss but that time I used white and some pink moss to really make it that fairy wipe and that was basically it. All right, now let's do the wand DIY. It's basically really just the same thing as I did to the box. I found these two branches recently and I was not sure which one to use for that DIY, but I decided for that one. And I feel like if you have a cute stick, it's already half of the rand. And first I decided to paint it in a brownish color to give it again that wooden vibe because I really wanted it to look like it has been growing inside of the tree as well or like something that a fairy would make out of a gift from a tree. And that is what I'm doing right here. And after that again basically just put some PVC glue on top and mold your clay around it. And that is basically it you guys that is how i do my wands and you can be as creative as you want it takes a little bit of practice but yeah again i don't think it's really really necessary to look perfect because i feel like that's the charm of wands that they look like old and mystical and individual and you can put gemstones inside you can paint it however you like or you could just use the stick as it is, but I just love doing these wands. It's such a therapeutic activity and yeah, I have been working on that for two days. And even today I was working on that wand and coloring and making final touches. So yeah. Here I'm trying to imitate a tree pearl like it is growing and I feel like it's turning out so cute. Again, I'm using the wooden carving to give it that kind of structure. And yeah, that's it, my friends. That's the one DIY. I also love to do these little leaves on top or like make it look like some poisonous ivy is growing around it. But yeah, really, really easy. And I hope you can try it out too. <music> 